All right. So, so far what we have learned about is we learned Azure Active Directory and Azure subscription. So eventually, if I summarize, you got a good understanding about how we set up the organization in the Microsoft Azure platform and how we provide access to the users. I mean, like how we provision the users, how we provision okay. access to the users and uh, groups and applications, right? That's what we have learned so far. And um, uh, we have also learned what is subscription and what are the different subscription types we have and how do you get a subscription um, and how do you monitor your subscription and how do you create a budget alerts how do you get notified and what are the limitations of your subscription like you know usage and quota right and um, yeah we also talked about management groups and uh, the importance of management groups and the subscriptions um, you know how you define the subscription how you define the management groups why do we need multiple management groups and multiple subscriptions multiple resource groups in the enterprise cloud environment so now we are in the situation where we can go ahead and start deploying the virtual machines. But I want to have a, a quick check point here. Before you start deploying any resources in the cloud, let us try to understand how Microsoft Azure platform is uh, going to handle the critical incidents, which means since you're deploying your resources in the cloud environment, which is managed by Microsoft, um, what are the different type of issues that you face at Microsoft Azure platform? And, uh, you know, how do you get notified for, for such issues? And uh, where do you go and validate them? And how do you handle them in the real time in case if there's a critical issue has been occurred, right? So basically you want to understand, you know, so what if there is a service issue at Microsoft and how do you handle those situations, right? So that's more important before we start deploying the Azure uh, resources. And I also want to you know, uh, clarify one thing. When it comes to the Microsoft Azure platform, there are two things that you have to remember, Microsoft Azure services and Microsoft Azure resources, okay? So when I say services, the services refers to the um, features or products Microsoft is offering, let's say virtual machine as a service, storage account as a service, all right? And um, let's say uh, SQL database as a service. These all are the services or products that Microsoft is offering. And within virtual machines, okay, you have created a virtual machine one. Let's say you have created your web server, web virtual machine one. Probably you have you created a database uh, server, right? DBPM one, right? These are the resources that are under the services, right? So under the virtual machines, you have created two virtual machines, uh, which is web VM one, uh, SQL one DB hyphen VM one. So under this service, you create two resources. This is called a resource, and this is called services. The reason why we are stressing here. When it comes to the Microsoft um, outages as well, there are some, you know, it's, uh, there are a uh, few ways to validate at the resource level. There, there are a few ways to validate the service level. Okay. And this is, this has to, you have to remember this terminology forever. Um, we shouldn't get confused yet. Okay. So sometimes Microsoft introduced the new features. Let's say in, within virtual machine, they might introduce the new features. Um, example, I would say the security features they enhanced. Okay, they enhanced uh, um, different features in terms of uh, VM security. That is the virtual machine as service level. It is not specific to your resource level. Resource level, they may not be able to give you any features they are going to introduce in a VM level. Probably in the resource level, you might have a virtual machine with the D series VM size. Okay, this very general, uh, you know, general CVM series that everybody uses. In case if you want to go for a, another uh, series, let's say E-series, e -series, maybe you have some other capabilities, right? Maybe this is a change that you are performing on the resource level, okay? So whatever 
changes that are make, made by Microsoft, okay, that is on a service level. Whatever the changes you are making on your virtual machine, that is on a resource level, okay? This is in your control, all right? The changes you are making on the resources are in your control, but services which are, uh, the changes which are made on the service level, not in, our, in your control, okay? All right, so and before they introduce any feature, definitely there will be a lot of testing and there will be a lot of feedback they hear from our customers and they'll, then only they will release the new capabilities and new features, okay? This is to clarify the services and resources in the Microsoft Azure platform, okay? So then if I go further, let me first show you in the Azure portal itself, okay? If I go to Azure portal and... Um, go to help and support. Under the help and support, you can see service health. All right, this is the uh, dashboard that you can see here. This talks about the service issues, okay? This is talking about the services issues and you can filter the subscriptions, multiple subscriptions in multiple regions and multiple services as well. In case if you have resources only in a specific regions, you don't want to look at other regions, you can only specify the selected, uh, you know, regions and uh, start looking at the, uh, you know, status of your uh, services. If I just maximize it, you know, you can see here there is a green, the ideally it is supposed to show you uh, different uh, colors here. In case if there is anything, any issue with respect to the virtual machine as service, um, it shows a warning or a critical symbol, um, you know, sign here it's showing green, which means everything is working fine as it is. So this is a classic model. I mean, this is like old version of the service health dashboard, what you're seeing, but you can also go for the preview version. Let me see, uh, try preview version. It's loading the preview. It's loading the data. Now we can see here. So everything seems to be fine, healthy locations and affected location will have this symbol. Uh, right now everything is good. That's what you can see here. And um, this is where you can see all the data centers, you know, all the, uh, across the regions, across the globe. These are the locations where Microsoft has the data centers and everything seems to be fine. You can filter by subscriptions, you can filter by regions, you can filter by services. This is how you can actually start looking at the um, service health uh, issues, all right? So when it comes to the service health issues, um, um, it's, uh, when it comes to the service health issues, there are different categories or activities, uh, kind of notifications you can see here. One is service issues that I just mentioned. The other one is the plan maintenance. Example, if I give you right, so um, you have virtual machine deployed and um, on uh, with your virtual machine is running on a you know physical server in the back end and that physical server might have to go through some you know monthly patching or you know quarterly patching uh, you know during the patching time your virtual machine might be rebooted or maybe unavailable for some time so those kind of uh, plan maintenances and notifications we'll be able to see from here so at the moment there are no uh, plan maintenance plan maintenances allocated for my, for my subscription so that's why you don't see anything but ideally you'll be able to see them and uh, they will be able to give you the notification well in advance. I would say at least 45 days uh, uh, notify, uh, notice, uh, I mean, advance notification they'll be able to send you so that you can plan your, you know, maintenance in advance. So and they will also give you another, uh, you know, uh, option where you can perform this maintenance. Maybe you might have been confused, like what is this maintenance all about it? As I said, um, the virtual, uh, the physical server where your virtual machine, where your virtual machine is running, might have to go through the patching, uh, the security patches, or you know, critical patches have to be installed on the server. During that time, the virtual machine will be rebooted because the physical server is being rebooted. Okay. And uh, this is the automated process where you don't need to take any action here. But in case um, during this process, if the virtual machine is rebooted and your customers may not be able to access the application, the, these kind of, uh, you know, reboots, um, you know, happens within less than one minute of time. It won't take more than 
you know one minute or two minutes but uh, that is from the microsoft platform side but uh, during this uh, because of this reboot your application might be crashed probably your os may not come online and uh, you might see a global outage for your customers because of this small activity right so that is the reason uh, microsoft is giving an option you can plan this schedule or a maintenance at your convenience um, you know between the time frame that they have given let's say uh, they are going to perform the maintenance in the next 45 days from now okay and they will also give you one week before the maintenance date they will give you a time slot during this time slot you can also initiate the maintenance by your own so that uh, you know you can inform your customers about this change and you can plan a downtime window and perform the maintenance. So what exactly happened during the maintenance, right? You are going to initiate a redeploy or a stop and start the machine, which means the, the virtual machine will go and sit in a, another node where patching has been already completed on the physical server level, okay? So you can initiate this uh, maintenance that you will get an option. You will be able to initiate the maintenance and uh, once you initiate the maintenance, uh, the VM will be online and because you plan the downtime, right? So that's a, one of the option Microsoft gives you. In case if you don't take any action, that's totally fine. Microsoft is automatically uh, perform the patching for the physical server and your virtual machine will be unavailable during that time. And health advisories, um, it's like uh, Microsoft introduced a new feature, uh, you know, which needs some upgrades of your application, maybe, you know, some settings has to be modified, you know, to ensure that your virtual machine or application is not going to be impacted much, right? So kind of uh, advisory solutions, will get it here. In security advisories, let's say Microsoft is um, uh, not going to support TLS version, okay? Such kind of uh, updates. Uh, TLS 1.0 is not being supported by Microsoft. So you have a storage account or you have any service which need to be upgraded to TLS 1.2 or your application need to be upgraded to TLS 1.2. Kind of example security, uh, you know, advisories you'll be able to see under the security advisory section. All right, so these are, this is the, I would say service health dashboard. Under this dashboard, you will be able to monitor these activities. One is planned maintenance. The other one is unplanned maintenance okay the other two are like um, best practices or you know advisory solutions with respect to the health of your service or resource or a service or you know security of your you know resource or service um, you know if you follow them you can be ensuring that your environment is secure okay in case let's say now there is a service issue has occurred right and uh, after some time the issue has been fixed you want to monitor, uh, you know, what was the issue happened in your subscription in the in the past couple of days, maybe let's say last in one month or two months or last 90 days, you can go to the health histories and you'll be able to see them here. And if you take a look at this, right, uh, one of the uh, issue that has happened recently, which is on uh, June 9th, um, you know, this is the start time. And uh, this is the, this applicate to, uh, up, this issue was applicable to my sub subscription. That's why I'm able to see them here. And uh, what is the issue? Event type, it's a service uh, issue. The first one, what you see, right? It's a service issue. And what is the service impacted? You can see Microsoft Azure portal, okay? It's like, it's not only the virtual machine as a service, uh, you know, um, uh, storage account as service. Sometimes you see Azure portal also is not being working fine. Maybe uh, APIs uh, through PowerShell is, may not work. Such kind of, uh, you know, uh, issues also will be notifying here. But if I click on this issue, let us see what it is talking about it. So this is the current status of the problem. It is resolved. A health event type is service issue and start date and end date. And um, what is the subscription? This is the subscription impacted. And what has happened, you can see between this time, uh, 3, 10 p.m. to 5 p.m. UTC on June 9th, customers may have experienced the um, 
uh, may have experienced the error notifications when trying to access the Azure portal and um, actions to load new HTTP content in the Azure portal may have resulted error in error notifications. So basically, you know, we were not able to uh, open the Azure portal. We were not able to log in during this time. So that is what it is uh, giving an error and what went wrong and why it has happened. How did they uh, respond and how it is fixed and what was the uh, next steps, I don't know, they are going to take to avoid these problems in the future. This is like complete RCA that they are providing you. And uh, you can download this to, as a PDF and use it for a future reference or, you know, share it with your external customers. Okay. If you look at this, this is a complete summary you get it. You can just share it with your end customers to, you know, review in case if they are looking for any RCA for this root cause analysis. Okay. This is about the fast... Uh, notifications, I mean, the past health advisories or no health issues. Um, but this only gives for the last 90 days, it may not give you for more than 90 days. Okay. And the, the other one I was talking about the resource health, uh, basically, uh, your resources like virtual machine one, virtual machine two, or a storage account one, storage account two, or database one, database, they are called resources, right? So example, if I take virtual machine one, right? So you have your virtual machine running. Example, your this virtual machine, let's say this is a VM1. And this virtual machine is running on a physical server at the data center, okay? And this is a server or a node managed by Microsoft, okay? In case, um, if this server is down or busy, your virtual machine one may not be working fine, right? This could also be a call, uh, an offline, right? So in such scenarios, the resource health, VM1 health will say, will show as a um, not healthy, or maybe you will give, get a critical or a error, error sign uh, on your virtual machine. Okay, that's called resource health. And that resource health, you can see from here, or you can also go to the VM1, or uh, virtual machine one, and there you will be able to see the resource health option. I will be able to show you when I start creating the resources, but eventually what I'm trying to say, your resources also will be down. It's not only the services, your resource also will be down. And um, during that time, you'll be able to see the notification uh, health status. So the, your services will be down because the virtual machine as a service or you know, Azure portal as service is down because there is some feature they introduced, Microsoft introduced, okay? Let's say the code it did not work well. Maybe um, the feature did not work well. So that's the reason, you know, um, the service outage has happened. Maybe the DNS or any, the, their physical infrastructure backend is not working. You know, this, uh, that's why service outages happened. Resources could be, you know, it's not, a, it can also be down when you make changes as a customer, let's say somebody from your team, you know, shut down the server, the resource health status will change from healthy to not healthy, uh, right? That's one of the reason you can see, and you can you can take your own actions on that. There's nothing that Microsoft can do anything about it. But in case your resource is down because of an issue at Microsoft, as I said, your node is down, your virtual machine one is down. Probably there's a storage account, uh, a storage system, which is uh, holding all your waste disk, data disk. If the storage system is down, your virtual machine is down. Probably there is a network. Okay, Microsoft performs some network updates to the racks, I mean, their switches or routers. And because of that, one of the network compound is not working. So because of their product and their changes, your virtual machine is down. These are like resource uh, being not uh, healthy and eventually the causes, uh, the change that they are making. So in this case, right, let's say the one of the switches is not working, which means the physical servers or you know, virtual machines or virtual switches connected to this physical switch may not work, which means only the set of customers are going to be impacted. Not everybody's impacted, right? But when it comes to the services, maybe the entire region is impacted because if they're pushing the uh, feature and new code into the specific region, 
that, that entire thing might be impacted, but here a specific set of customers. So we call this as a minor outages. Okay, only if limited customers are impacted, they call it as a minor outages. If, if it is impacted for entire region or as, uh, multiple customers, they call it as a major outages. Okay, so these are the service issues and resource level issues that you see. And uh, that, that information again, you can come here and start looking at it. Okay, and whatever health uh, alerts I was talking about it, you can see them from here. So what health alerts are means? Now we learned what kind of events that occurs, how you can check them, all right? Now you cannot come every day here. Or maybe your team cannot come every day here and monitor. Maybe you cannot be monitoring all the time here, right? You want to get some alerts or a notification so that somebody can come here to just confirm, okay, there is an issue at Microsoft, right? Otherwise, you know, somebody have to come here every day or maybe they have to come here, do a refresh every time and check if there is an outage, no outage, okay, good. This is one method. The other method is somebody is complaining that, okay, there is a service they're not able to access. Probably they are not able to access the application, they're not able to access the, um, any VM or anything. That's where you will go to the virtual machine where the application is running. You check the virtual machine is running fine. You don't see any issue and maybe uh, you checked all network latest stuff, everything is good, configuration is good, and you didn't make any changes in last seven days or whatever it is. Then you are, you come here and check, okay, service issues, and you realize, okay, there is a, a, a service that is impacted, all right? So then you take an action. By the time you take an action, right, somebody already reported as an outage. Right, somebody complained and then you came here. It's not a proactive approach, it's a reactive approach. In case if you want to take some actions proactively and uh, inform your customers proactively, then you have to have some alerting system in place. You have to have some some sort of notification in place, right? So to do that, you can create a service health alert. Okay, those alerts you can specify what action you can perform. Then once you create a service health alert, you can go to the health alerts here and check if there are any alerts that are being triggered or not. Okay, that's what you can see. First, if you want to create a service health alert, click on service health alert or health alert, I would say. Select the uh, subscription, select the condition. Okay, condition is a service health and uh, select the action groups, uh, sorry, services and the regions and what kind of event type it is. Is it only the service issues that you want to monitor? You want to monitor the plan maintenance? You want to monitor the everything? You can select everything. Or you want to monitor only specific regions and services? You can specify them. And in the action group, uh, you need to create an action group. So right now we don't have it. Last time we created one, but I'll just go to the next. Okay, let's create one here. What I want to show is a notification. I'm not going to create alerts now, but I want to show you the notification. When such criteria is meeting, let's say there is a service outage, there is a, or else there is a plan maintenance event that, that's going to happen, or probably there is a health advisory, secondary, uh, security advisories. Whatever it is, when such incident happen, what do you want to do? You want to get an email, you can specify the email alert and uh, email ID and say okay then if i go to the actions this is where you can it's an optional we also discussed about this in the last session uh, do you want to get a email uh, you want to perform any actions when such event occurred and uh, you know you want to integrate with the uh, webhook or you, you want to integrate with itsm tools or even harm what action you want to perform, you can perform. And um, accordingly, the action will be performed. Let's say if you specify only the email in the notifications, you only get an email. You don't want to perform any action once you get an email automatically, you can just ignore this one. Okay, so these are the options you have it. And good thing with the service health uh, issues, you can, it's not only use just uh, send an email, if you integrate this with the webhook and you can specify the webhook URL or you can specify your service now or whatever the URL and it will just trigger the alert to the service now or a ticketing tool and the ticket will be automatically created. 
okay so that's a good thing you know it's not only like you know if you think um same way right okay you need somebody to monitor the mailbox all the time like i said okay somebody have to come here and do a refresh all the time to see what events are there similarly if i just enable the you know email alerts and somebody have to be there to monitor the emails email mailbox right that's not feasible to anybody that is the reason we want to do two things okay you just uh, get a email not um, get a email notification if possible and if it is possible again just to create a ticket to your team members so ticket will have a sla and everything and uh, you have your help desk team or anybody maybe you get an email you will you will because you will be eventually working on the ticketing tool all the time right and there will be a shift lead or you know some team member who can actually monitor these alert uh, tickets and assign the tickets to uh, different team members right and uh, you have a process in place you know you have us uh, ticket has SLA if SLA is going to be breached in next 10 minutes 15 minutes you know you get a notification to your manager if you missed a monitor somebody else will monitor it and respond to you right so that's the reason it's better to send or stream this uh, issues to a ticketing tool so that it will be easy for you to track it and uh, even for the audit purpose you can have it in, in your you know a ticketing system for future reference so those are the options what you have it and this how you monitor it so now you learn what are the outages uh, what are these different serv uh, service health issues and how do you check them and uh, how do you get notifications or how do you get emails or a ticket now let's say you got a incident you got a ticket created saying Microsoft Azure virtual machines are impacted and let's say West Europe location. So what do you do in the next, what do you do for the next, what, what will be your next step, right? What do you do? So in such scenarios, you can't do anything here because if it is something in your hand, let's say you reboot the server, the issue will fixed, you can do it. Probably, you know, you take RDP to the server and start some services probably that can be possible if it is in your scope but the issue is at the vendor side which is microsoft azure platform right if the platform itself down you can't take any actions here all right and sometimes though they specify this which europe is down your virtual machine may not be part of that outage or may be part of that outage so when you get an alert you cannot simply send an email to you know your customer saying there is an outage it's always better to validate quickly okay when there is an outage happen what happens is if you go to the incident here there is something called uh, you will see an option the impacted resources okay right now it's not showing up the impacted resources in will give you like list of resources that are impacted during because of this outage all right you can just log into a few random servers to check whether it is working fine or not maybe it's really impacted if it is really impacted two things that you have to do it in case if your company have any support plan purchase with microsoft you can go ahead and raise a support ticket with microsoft to track these issues and you don't need to specifically track it because they will keep on update the status here and you can also go to microsoft azure status now web page there also you can check this in case if it is a minor outage they may not notice it unless you raise a support ticket with microsoft so it's always better to raise a support ticket with microsoft to identify the root cause or to validate what how many resources are impacted in case if this uh, you know incident or you know notification what you're seeing if it shows uh, only few machines but there are other machines which are not identified Right, it will be a problem. So it's better to raise a support ticket with Microsoft to understand how many resources got impacted because of this outage. That's a step one. And the step two is you if you might have some process in place, ITL process, maybe you might have service management team, maybe somebody who actually have the full authority to share this information to your end customers. All right, probably your internal team members send an email to them saying, okay, there's an outage at Microsoft. Because of that, our resource might be impacted. 
We are working with Microsoft to track this issue closely and we'll keep you posted the status. Okay, so you have to update the status every 30 minutes or one hour to everybody so that they are aware that, you know, you are working with Microsoft and, uh, you know, they are also working to fix this problem. So this is the way how you communicate in case if there is a critical incident happen. And uh, Microsoft confirmed that, okay, this issue is fixed, the issue is fixed. And when, when you try to access the application, that's not working. All right. So in case if you and confirm your end user saying that, okay, Microsoft outage is fixed and uh, resources should be accessible. So then when they try to access, you might they might see an issue, right? So as soon as the Microsoft confirm that the issue is resolved, you are not supposed to send a communication immediately to your end customer. It's always important to validate whether the issue is resolved or not. Probably from the platform side, like uh, from Microsoft side, the issue might be fixed. But because of that issue, maybe your virtual machine uh, network interface card might be, you know, damaged or maybe it had some problem, uh, you know, it needs a reboot. Maybe it needs a reboot. Probably the services might went down, application services, the services need to be uh, restarted. There could be some couple of or a set, uh, checks or maybe sanity checks has to be performed, right? You have to perform those sanity checks and, uh, you know, uh, confirm that everything is working, then you confirm to your end users. Sometimes you might have a confusion. Okay, it's an application uh, server. How do I know whether appli which application I have to check, right? It's always important to engage or get in touch with the application team to ensure that the services are running before you re release or confirm the issues result to the end customer. If you don't know, maybe if, if you think that the application team may not be available all the time, it's important to capture what what kind of uh, you know checks or sanitary checks that they perform during such outages right you have to get those uh, in information well in advance so that in case if there, if there is a real problem occur you can avoid the dependency from them in fact you can go for some kind of automation by building the powershell scripts uh, you know just running this commands might give you the status if you, there are multiple virtual machines in the system, right? So this is how we handle in case if there is an outage happen, be it a service outage, a service uh, outage, or be it a resource outage, right? Be it a virtual machine or be it a service outages, okay? And when you're working with your application team or, you know, your program managers, or product managers, or, you know, what they say always, hey, we are moving to the cloud for the high availability solutions why the, these kind of issues are occurring, you know? How can I uh, ensure that my application is highly available? You know, for us, we only take care of infrastructure, but for the, the program managers or, you know, customer facing uh, managers or management, they have to answer the questions to the end customer. Whatever the question they are asking to you, they, the, the same questions might be asked by the end customer, right? So you are in the cloud and, um, no, I don't care whether the application is an Azure or AWS. I want the application to be highly available, right? So, but it's a true fact that um, everybody has to um, agree that the platform might go down, be it in a private cloud, on-premises, or in the public cloud, which is an Azure or AWS, right? So we need to plan for high availability solutions. A server might go down you have to plan for the high availability solutions, which means you cannot run your critical application on the one server. You need to have another server and you need to distribute the traffic to another server in case of primary server is down. You need to think about high availability solutions. You cannot complain that Microsoft that, you know, you are going, your services are down multiple times. So in case if they, you know, if you claim that there's a multiple downtime situations at Microsoft, you are eligible for SLA refund, provided that, you know, there are some terms and conditions, right? If you follow them, and if you think that you are seeing more than 99.99% SLA uh, missing, then you can raise a ticket with Microsoft, they'll provide a SLA refund, okay? But it's always recommended to think about high availability solutions before you start uh, uh, 
deploying your infrastructure or deploying your applications. So that is what everybody has to understand. It's common that these platforms might go down, but we need to ensure that the high availability solutions in place. Okay, so that everybody are happy, you know, though there is a downtime, it could be a very minimal downtime. Okay, and the outages that I mentioned, Microsoft side the issue is fixed, but your application is not up. It's not an issue at Microsoft. It's an issue at your application. You have to think how you can make sure that your application is automatically up when the server is up, right? Likewise, you have to start uh, modernizing your applications, uh, enhancing your uh, capabilities of your applications to automatically come online in case if the server is online. Such kind of things, you know, uh, so the application owners and everybody have to follow to avoid this long duration of downtimes. All right. So that's all everybody for today. Um, so I want to cover before we start deploying any resources, you should know what kind of outages that you might expect and how do you handle them? How do you monitor them? Right. And uh, the different situations, different conversations that you might have with your different stakeholders at your uh, organization is what we have discussed so far. OK, so in the next session, I'm going to talk about how we can create a virtual machine. What are the dependency resources for creating a virtual machine? And when creating virtual machine, different options you will see. What are those options? What are the best practices? Once a virtual machine is created, we will start uh, we will start, uh, you know, uh, deploying the, um, uh, configuring the backups, DR solutions and various other things to ensure that your application, your servers are secured and highly available. All right. Thank you, everybody.